No, we're now live. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome, welcome to In Conversation with Alan. And today we have a, a super guest, a good friend of mine. We're just had to be shooting the breeze before we started. And today I have the unbelievable, the man of the moment, uh, Mr. Ted Rubin. So let's roll credits and get into this conversation. Yes, indeed. Good afternoon. Welcome on in. I just kind of, you know, there's no, there's no need for an introduction for this man. He is here. There he is. Look in the flesh. It is the one and only Mr. Ted Rubens. How are you, my friend? Well, I'm really excited to be here. You know, Alan, when we were just talking, I thought we were live. I didn't realize it was just between us. <laughs> but, you know, what I was just saying is it's great to connect with people. It, it, a lot of us are, are sheltering in place. A lot of us are home. A lot of us are finding new um, barriers to the relationships we're, not, we're, we're used to maintaining. And it's just nice to have you here in my living room. Hey. <laughs> so how have you been? I haven't spoke to hey, It's a good while since the last time we were talking, I was uh, doing demo videos for him, uh, for Ted, to pour a pint of Guinness. And how yeah. we, I found it on TikTok and I seen him pour and I went, you know, I have to share this. And... Yes, and the joys well, of it. I just, as I just said to you before, I'm so much better because now I actually know how to <laughs> properly pour a pint of Guinness from a can. I've been to the Guinness factory. I, I learned how to do it there um, from a tap. But what I really love, and, and I think this goes to the point of this conversation we're, we're, we're talking about here, is that you didn't just pull a video off of YouTube or off of TikTok and send me that. You, you watched it, learned it, made your own video with you showing me how to properly pour a can of Guinness. And to me, that, that's just, that's part of the connection. That shows me that, look, we all send things to people that we pull off of places, but you took that extra time to build that relationship by making one of your own. And that really, honestly, it meant a lot to me, especially during these times. Yeah, and it is. Though it's true, and that's you know, and I think you've always been an advocate of that. We've always, we like any time we've talked, we've always known what's going on in each other's lives and stuff like that. And you know, and it's great. And that's, and I think that's the power of what we're talking about. And you know, it goes back to really what we, as you always say, the return on relationship. And it's so true. And that's what um, I think. We really are going to be started talking about here today as much as everything else. Um, so, guys, if we do get sidetracked, don't worry about it. Just go with it. Just go with it because that's, that's the way these things happen, you know. Um, so, tell us, how have you, I, I suppose, the way I want to start with this, I think, is, is tell us, how have you been getting on in all of this COVID craziness that's going on? Well, I, I think like everybody, I have my good days and my bad days. Um, mm. Um, I'm fortunate in many ways. I live in South Florida. I'm on the water. I'm a quarter mile from the beach. I have easy access to outdoor activities, although it is like over 100 degrees here, um, actual feeling temperature and very humid. So I'm not used to being here during the summer. I usually travel mm. uh, out of 14 weeks of like June, July, August, and part of September. I'm the last four years, I've been here for two weeks. Uh, now I'm here straight through. But, you know, again, I wake up some days fully charged up and ready to go. And I wake up other days like Groundhog Day. Like, you know, oh, my God, yeah. am I still here? Same thing. You know, some days I feel very connected. A lot of those days are days I have things like this with people where, you know, I'm reaching out and having really heartfelt conversations. And on other days I'm feeling alone and and stuck by myself. And then like everybody else, I, I, I've done my best to stay away from everybody down here in the state of Florida, not only is, is the uh, um, virus raging, but people are just, they don't care. Uh, they haven't been at the beginning. Uh, there's a terrible attitude here, like I'm sure you've heard throughout the United States. Mm. Uh, people think this thing's just going to go away, disappear, or is it real, or won't affect them until it does. Um, so I work hard to keep myself distant from people. Uh, again, I'm fortunate because they're, I'm not in a crowded area, but you know, then again, like some people I wake up, you know, you have a little sore throat, you have a headache, you start worrying. Is it me? Do I have it? You know, and then you get past that and you go back to doing things. So what I try to do, and I think a lot of people have is 
I, I'm trying even harder now than I had in the past to stay connected to people, to be online, to be very mm -hmm. active on social platforms, um, to find time for things like this. And whether it's Zooms or, you know, I'm the guy that always preferred, like, if you want to speak to me, call me. I don't want to be on FaceTime. I don't want to be on Zoom. I don't want to have to worry about where I am, what I'm wearing, how I look, you know, uh, whatever that happens to be. But now it's really nice to have these tools to, to feel that closer connection. So, you know, yeah. I think, uh, and then of course there's business. So I, I'm fortunate. Um, the company I'm partners in, as you see here, Photify and all around me, um, we've managed to really work hard. The team has been amazing. Our leader, John Andrews has done a remarkable job of keeping us focused and keeping our eye on the ball. We're very fortunate. Our product is beautiful branded content in under 30 seconds for business and enterprises. And um, a lot of companies are more interested in things like this now that their budgets for traditional marketing are being diminished because yeah. of the economy and things that are going on. So um, I won't tell you that we're going crazy and thriving, but we're surviving, we're growing. Um, I'm busy with that. I've dedicated myself a little more to that because a big part of my year this year, which was a transition for me, was going to be... Um, uh, keynoting at events. You know, um, I, I, um, I emceed the brand innovator events for six years. Mm. Uh, very busy traveling with about 50 plus events a year. Um, obviously, even if it hadn't ended last summer, it would have ended um, with COVID. Um, but all, you know, I had planned to work on a startup where I wasn't taking revenue. Um, uh, uh, four of my longstanding consulting um, gigs that had gone on for six years had kind of come to a close naturally before this. Either companies, two companies were acquired, another one is prepping for that. Brand Innovators was transitioning a bit, and, and so I made a decision to put a lot of my time into Photify and earn my money speaking. Which, of course, you know, the fifteen or so events I had booked for the year are, are all gone. And as most people have seen, they're, they're not even getting re, you know, rescheduled because no one yeah. knows when this is going to happen. Plus. Uh, something I want to share. I think things are going to change. I don't think we're ever going to go back to the world where there were so many real live, real life events because companies, people, um, um, organizations have learned that a lot of that travel and a lot of that location based, those, those location based events weren't necessary. Um, companies are accomplishing the same <clears throat> remotely. Uh, people, yes, people like to travel sometimes, but a lot of people don't. I mean, you know, you're away from your family. It takes away time from work. Um, I think a, I think a lot of companies are going to transition to closing a huge amount of offices. I don't think we've seen it yet because leases are still in place. But I think most companies uh, are going to not renew leases on a lot of property because mm. they learn that something they feared all along oh my god people working remotely they'll never get work done that for the most part i think people are are more effective and yeah more done and are also having in some ways other than what we're living through right now are having better lives they're closer to their families they can have lunch with their kids they can they can help and do things that were more difficult to do remotely and companies because they had no choice have gotten they had to, yeah. with with remote workers and the fact that we actually will do our work if we're not sitting right in front of you with your thumb on top of us. Yeah. And I noticed that as well. Like I know like at the start, like I remember talking to uh, Brian Fanzo and he was saying like he was totally because he obviously he relied on a lot of doing a lot of live events and then but he has he said he pivoted and just said, right, okay, let's how are we going to change this? And he did and he's done very well with it and whatever. But I know I did, I did, I do agree totally with you where people were before, you know, companies were saying, you know, oh, no, 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 that digital, you know, working from home, we can't keep an eye, we can't keep control. And then suddenly COVID hit and it was like, all right, how are we going? What are we going to do? How are we going to do this? And of course, the first week, I think everyone was sort of sitting back and saying, oh, well, I'm at home now. I'll just do a little bit in the morning. But then as the week started to progress, I seen a lot of people were a lot more productive because one, they were bored or two, they were saying, right, well, I have to get this. Done. So they were saying like, right, well, let's get stuck in. And you could see like I spoke to a number of different, you know, CEOs and stuff like that. And they even says, we have never been so productive as we are now 
to when we were in the office because people have taken it on themselves to do it. And, and when they see that, I think it's just fantastic. You know, I think there's another side to this that a lot of countries didn't foresee or very few people did. I, I'll, I'll say I didn't, even though I thought remote work was always something that had value, mm. uh, is that I find it, it very much with the Photify team is that we become much closer. Yes. Um, we are engaging all the time. We're like, we're, 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 first of all, we're concerned with each other's lives. We're concerned with, the, with each other's health and their families more so than we were before because we've learned to focus on it. We've experienced how that feels when you truly care about others that you're working mm. with. And it feels good. Um, so I think it's happening more. And also, you know, a lot of offices, I'll tell you, a lot of companies I've been in, people in the offices, they, you know, avoid each other. People say, oh my God, they're in offices, you get together more. No, they they stay alone. They worry they're not going to get their work done. They try to close their door. And then there are meetings, meetings, meetings. You know, there's been books written about this crazy that, I mean, I used to avoid meetings at a lot of the companies I was at as much as I could because it wasted mm -hmm. half of my day. And then half of the meeting was spent with waiting for people to join. And with people coming in and schmoozing and not talking and not paying attention. And then all the people that hung out afterwards and kept going, whereas with a lot of these Zoom meetings and, and, and online facilitations, um, things are happening much more efficiently in that respect. Mm. Um, mm. And we're doing them in, in a regular way where we're connecting with our coworkers um, and we're feeling the need to because we're not seeing them. So I think a lot of what happened is we thought we were closer to people because we saw them. We walked by them. We saw them as we went out for lunch. But now we're actually taking the making the effort to yeah, engage. To, to, to engage. Yeah. And, and, and to look, you know, something I've been preaching for years, and you know this, is before you get on the phone with people, check them out. Go to their page. See what's happening in their lives. Know what's going on. And, you know, people ignore that a lot, except now they're, they, they, you certainly don't want to get on with somebody and find out someone in their family um, has gotten the virus or that there's some other challenge because there's, you know, it's not just that. There's challenges that we all experience every day now, but have become much more relevant to us because I think we're much more in tune with what's going on with people's lives. Mm. So I think people mm. are using those tools more and getting to know people that they work with and caring more about them. Yeah, because we do like we do a thing on a Friday morning where there was a lot of we used to meet every, you know, there was a like a chamber type of meeting on. And whereas that stopped. And then what we done was is one of the girls brought this online. I love it. I love it. Totally, totally. All the way, all the way. But we brought it on the, the girl, one of the girls brought it online, two of them brought it online. And now we have it every Friday morning. But what was be, what has been great about it was is. We all knew what each other did in business, but we now know each other as people. And, exactly. you know, there's a lot more connections there. We know that such and such is, you know, going out this whatever, doing whatever it is. They're having the barbecues or whatever, you know, family. And when I say immediate family, but they're right. doing stuff, you know. So you, you learn a lot more about people. And I think that's where this return on relationship comes from from and i think it's so so important and i think it's made us all stand back and think and it's made us all stand back and sort of say okay what is precious in my life and what is actually working and do i really need to be doing all of this and as you say going away from your family or going away from friends or whatever it may be and just sitting and, and leaving all that when you can do it all now nearly directly to wherever it has to be done. And people are becoming a lot more, I suppose, cognizant of that as well and really starting to understand that, that it's that it's there, you know. So, yeah, I totally agree. I love the hat. I love the hat. Well, thank you. <laughs> I thought you come on. I'd actually thought you come on with the other T-shirt on. So it sort of. I have them in different colors. I, you know, it's. Uh, I just got my flag to put up on my boat. Yeah. All right. There's no need to brag with the boat. Okay. Don't get it. <laughs> it's a little eighteen footer. It's not much. Fun. So it, it should be told. It's not as much fun to go out by yourself as it is with other people. No. no exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um. So with that in mind, and we're talking, I suppose, about 
I suppose, the remote working. I know when it started out first that I was getting a lot of calls from clients that we were working with that were saying, oh, we're going to pull back on social because we're not open and stuff. And I'm going, this is the wrong time to be pulling back. This is the time to be moving online. And this is the time to be talking to your customers. So what advice would you give uh, companies out there and even, you know, entrepreneurs out there that are sort of still in two minds about this? You know, I think we covered some of this and, and I'll reiterate it is that we have more time. Mm. If not, and by the way, that doesn't mean people aren't working hard, but with, without the travel, without the back and forth, without some of the things happening, um, I, I just think this is an opportunity to connect with people, um, especially Truth be told, if your business has been tremendously affected, and a lot of us have had that happen, um, it's a great time to show your customers that you really care. I mean, especially when they know that they can't buy from you or they can't do something with you or they, they can't attend your, come to your establishment, but you're showing them that you're concerned about them. Is there anything that, that you, they, you could, they can do to support you? Um, you know, I, I look at businesses and I see this side and this side. So I see the restaurant owners and I know some of them who just don't want to evolve, who don't want to change. All they want to do is hunker down and wait until everything goes back to normal. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be a long wait. Um, number one, I don't think it's ever going to go back to normal. I think there's going to be a new normal. Um, I, I, just like after every calamity or crisis in the world, things change, whether there's new rules or new way of doing things or new habits that people form. And I see, like, I have a particular friend that owns a restaurant that all he does is complain. All he does is complain. My business, my this, woe is me. I can't get anything. Nobody wants to buy anything. I'm like, well, clearly you must have a lot of time in your hands. He goes, yeah, well, my place is closed. I'm like, then why aren't you out knocking on doors or hanging up flyers or delivering food? Or, you know, I'm, I'm like, and you must have um, the ability to set up new types of resources. Now, yeah. again, every suggestion I gave him, all I got back was I tried it. It didn't work. And by the way, we're, this was only like a few weeks in. So how long could we have tried it? You know, it's like, oh, yeah. and I say this all the time. It takes time. Someone gets on social and says, well, no one got back to me. Or I didn't get any likes. Or, oh, my hashtag isn't, isn't catching on. Well, you used it for a week, for God's sake. You, you've been mm -hmm. on Instagram for three months. Like, these things take years and years. and Or months and months. Or, they, you know, whatever it happens to be. But now I know another restaurant owner. Um, who my business partner introduced me to in North Carolina. And all he's doing is, is testing out new methods, trying to figure out what will work. He tries something new every day. He's transitioning some of his existing um, properties into delivery only. He's trying to think of a drive through concept because he's not sure when people will come back to coming into restaurants. So why not try to transition those resources into something else? Now, truth be told, and I'm sure we'll hear it here. There are some people that don't have the resources to do that or we're living, you know, week to week uh, on their expenses and can't do that. I get it. I'm not saying this for everybody, but I will assure you my friend who I'm talking about that won't keep trying has the ability to keep trying, you know, and instead what he's doing is he's surviving. He, you know, does a few meals. He does a little bit here and there, but instead of trying to thrive, his mindset is on thriving. And yeah. I mean, is, on, is on surviving. And, and uh, look, it's easy to say that perspective and mindset and, and attitude is everything. It's a lot harder to make it happen. I get that. Look, I wake up some days and I have no desire to do anything. And, and I am not under pressure financially. And I am living in a nice home. And, and I still feel those, those things happening to me, uh, even though, I'm living through this fine. So I can't imagine what it's like for somebody who's losing their business or who doesn't have the ability to pay their bills. Um, but I will say that most of us have some ability to figure it out, to do things, to pivot, to, to evolve, to look in a different direction. And then I'll say that a lot of us have the responsibility to look to those people that can't fix it and see how we can help them. I, yeah. I mean, I spend a big part of my week talking to people. <clears throat> and one of the advantages I've found here is that, you know, I get a lot of people reaching out to me for advice, just to chat, to hear what their ideas are, to see what I can do to help them. And 
look, we all have only so many hours in a day. And when I traveled all the time and I was on planes and I was trying to figure out my travel and finding my way to a hotel and then also having to prepare myself to get on stage, I didn't have as much time as I have now. Now I, anybody who reaches out to me, I basically say, great, let's, you know, either number one is my, my phone number is 516-270-5511. My email is tedrubin at gmail.com. Everybody knows how to find me socially. Reach out to me, pick up the phone and just call me. You don't need an appointment. Now, if you want to talk for an hour, I might have to say, hey, let's schedule some time. But if you just want to say hello, or you have a quick question, I pick up my phone and you'll find that my voicemail is not full like some people do. And by the way, their voicemail is full mm. for one reason and one reason only. Not because they get so many calls, because they don't want you leaving a message, because then they're obligated to call you back. Or if they don't call you back, you can call them out on it. My voicemail is open. I call people back. So what I'm saying is those of us that aren't under those constraints where we can't do anything about this, and there are many of those, let's try to help them. Yeah. Right? Let's make this a time where we all step up. Now, I, I'm not saying write checks. I'm not saying, you know, obviously, look, I'm not going helping somebody paint their house because I'm not going out there, you know, and I don't want to be in a group or around people like that. But I have the ability to give them advice. I have the ability to just talk with them. I can't tell you how many people say to me, thank you for just finding the time to talk. And I go, well, I hope some of what I said helped. And they're like, well, I don't know if I can actually do some of those things, but it doesn't matter. Just the fact that you got on the phone or just the fact that you talked. There's so many yeah. lives you can have an effect on by making yourself, very important word here, available. Yeah, and I totally, and I and I totally agree with that. And I think, you know, that's where, like, even like, I know when the pandemic started, and I was seeing people talking online, and they were saying, "Oh, how are we going to use this Zoom? How are we going to use?" <laughs> it's like a hat shop in there. Oh, it's yeah, well, you know, we, we have a, we have a lot of messages I want to get across here, so we've got to, you know, work it's true. On it. continue. It's true, but. Like when it started, like when the pandemic started, there was people saying, oh, how am I going to get, how am I going to use Zoom? How am I going to, and I sat here and one more and I just says, okay, right. I'm seeing all these messages. I need to help. I have the experience. I know how Zoom works. So I literally got on and I just created, I think it was four or five videos of how you started, how you get it. The usual, just teach them, you know, the norm, like the very yeah. basics. Can huh? you say this to me, please? Sorry? Can you say I will, of course I will, no problem, no problem. But like that, I had people ringing me then saying, Alan, thanks so much for the Zoom, for showing us how to use Zoom. We were screwed. How can, and, and the same, like I had one girl, she came on, she says, oh, I just have a few questions. I says, yeah, answer them. She says, how much do I owe you? And I says, you don't owe me anything. I was doing it to help you. And she went, oh my God, you're so good. But like that. I think even more people done that and a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of business. I've seen a lot of, you know, people like yourself and Brian Fanzo. There's, there's so many, you know, Steve Dotto. I've seen a lot of them doing this. And I went, this is what it's about. It's about us sharing our expertise in this time, because that's what we can give. As you say, I don't want to be going out. I don't want to be interacting with people, but I know I can sit here in an office or I can sit here in my home and be able to help people. And, let them pick up the phone because that's, I think, paying it forward as much as anything else. And I firm believer in what you put out there has a ripple effect and it, and it shines on. That's return on relationship. Do for others without mm. expectation of anything directly in return. And what I will promise you, you'll get a return immediately. Most of it will come back in different ways, but the way you'll get immediately is what you feel here. You know, that, that, that what, like how good you feel. Like one of the mm -hmm. things I love to do most is help people get jobs. There's an yeah. old movie called Dave that was Kevin Klein starred in. And See, you know, I loved it. Loved that, it yeah. He ended up with a plate, like he, he was a lookalike for a president who uh, had, had had a heart attack or something or was in a coma. But his regular job was he helped people get jobs. He had an agency. And he said, you know, there's no better feeling than helping someone get a job. But here's mm -hmm. another important thing is that encouraging people to do what's necessary. Um, I, I see a lot of people and I have a lot of friends who they made great livings, but they, they didn't, they never saved. They didn't put any money aside for whatever reason. Some of them couldn't, some of them didn't No, no judgment there, but now they can't pay their bills. And I'm like, well, why don't you work at like Amazon's hiring, uh, Whole mm. 
hiring. Well, no, I, I, that's not going to help me with anything. I go, it'll pay your rent. It'll keep your house from getting foreclosed. You know, listen, I've been through a lot of different periods of my life. I've reinvented myself a lot. I've had ups and downs. I've opened businesses. I've been very successful. I've lost businesses and, and been broke. Um, I fought to keep my daughters in my life and went $300,000 into, into debt as recently as 2010. And thank God I had friends and, you know, and, and banks that were willing to lend me the money to finance that fight. And after that, I did whatever I could. I paid back all my friends in 14 months. I worked 20 hour days. I took on work that I knew I wasn't, it wasn't even in my, in my, in my wheelhouse, but I figured it out. Um, I, I took whatever jobs I couldn't. I've been at other points in my life before that where a business closed and maybe I didn't need money that day to pay a bill, but I needed to feel productive. And mm. the, one of the guys I was talking about who owns a restaurant, I worked doing his, uh, doing his building in his restaurant. And I don't, I'm not talking about his books. I'm talking about sitting there at night, handing out the checks to the people that came in to eat and figuring those out and then taking in the money and putting in the credit cards. Why? Because it earned me some money. It kept me productive. It got me out of the house and I didn't let my ego get in the way of that. And look, I was very lucky. I had a grandfather who escaped Poland during world war two um, and, and the Holocaust and then spent most of the war with any spare moment he had raising money to sneak Jews out of Poland. Um, and I had a father who grew up, you know, during depression area and had his own father die young. And they both taught me that you do what you got to do. And I can't stress that enough that there are a lot of people out there like you and I who right now might be suffering and they're moaning and groaning instead of taking action. Yeah. And you've got to step up. And again, not everybody. I get that. But the people that can go get something done, go do something. It won't stop you from finding another job. I assure you, it'll make you productive. And also, more importantly to people like us, so I'm very into people wearing masks, people staying home, people you know, uh, sheltering at home. But if you need to make a living, I'm not going to hold that against you. I'm going to encourage you to do what you have to do to do that. You know, recently I posted something that, you know, really, and I'm not going to use the words I used on the post, but calling out people that belittle people that wear masks. And you know what? Some people called me out and they're like, well, you know, it, it, they call on all this nonsense about it not being healthy or it's not good for them or they all have got an issue. And I'm like, fine, but I'm not calling you out for not wearing a mask, although I do have an issue with that. I'm calling the people out who are belittling the people that are doing that. And look, we all have to deal with this in the ways that we can. So as long as you're not putting other people at risk, do what you have to do. Get out there, deliver for Amazon, work at an Amazon warehouse, work at Whole Foods, um, work at any other company that might be hiring. And there's a bunch, I know Papa John's, uh, I know the CEO there, and he put out a notice that they're short of people, they're short of delivery people, they need workers. Do what you have to do and encourage people around you to do that instead of discouraging them. Yeah, I seen it over here as well. Like we had, like obviously all the pubs and the bars are closed. Um, they were like people were going, "Oh, what are we going to do?" And like, "Oh, the barmen, where are they working?" Whatever. And you know, I would think it was the types of say the supermarkets over here that like they were just saying, "Well, look, we're looking for staff because we're so busy," and ended up they they start employing all of these you know barmen and stuff. But they did it because they said, "Okay, right, well that's fair enough. They had to make a living. You have to do something." You know, and it's been very good, and there's been a great sense of community. But you know, the thing that I found is, is that when I, when it sort of, I think it was about four or five weeks into this, I was sort of sitting there and I was going, oh, really, really, uh, <laughs> really, um, it was just like, oh my god, this is just, it was just like a cloud. It was like so someone had thrown a blanket over the world, and right. everyone was in the same boat, and. I sort of had to stop and step back from it and say, okay, what can I do? Do I sit here in misery? Do I sit here worried? Do I sit, or do I get up and I do something about it and I see if what, what I can do. And that's exactly what I think a lot of people did. And I think it's just changed so much for everyone. I just wanted to say, um, just quick shout out there to BB Baskin, who is um, watching in live. And she says, I know that name so well from social. Me is speaking of you. Uh, it is quite a coup for Alan to get to see uh, the great Ruben being interviewed. Cool at all. 
I'd be here every day for Alan if he asked me. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. And BB actually is uh, really cool because she was the first female presenter to have her own show on RTE television here in um, in Ireland. Uh, back in the 80s, back yeah. in the 80s. And she'd give, she'd give out stink for me for saying that as well. So <laughs> she's also saying here, Ted, I am one of the beneficiaries of oh, Alan's knowledge and kindness. He produces my wellness. I do. She has a fantastic podcast well worth the listen uh jason cooper is also in someone has changed hats again yes indeed uh so yes yeah, so great lovely great to have you all here but um yeah no ted as always it's a pleasure to sit and talk with you i could talk we could talk for hours here as we normally would uh but i like to try and keep these to 30 minutes or so how can people reach out to you and connect with you if they want to get in contact well like i gave earlier my phone number is 516-270-5511 i actually pick up the phone and call back people that leave voicemails um if you don't leave a voicemail i probably won't call you back um my email address is tedrubin at gmail.com i'm ted rubin just about everywhere on um social media uh the only thing that's different is my youtube channel which is ted rubin usa um, where I'm not very active, but I do post my videos. And, and look, you can tweet me at, at Ted Rubin. I'll respond to you. Reach out anytime. I'm really happy to engage. And I want to tell you that, you know, something I want to leave you with. There's two things I want to leave you with, and there are things I say a lot. Number one is that relationships are like muscle tissue. The more you engage them, the stronger and more valuable they become. And, and my relationship with Alan is a perfect example. Um, and, and, and that's because, you know, he reaches out, he nurtures it. Um, I, I respond, I reach out to him. Um, there's a back and forth here, but more important than anything is, is he takes the time and he puts in the work and it is work. You know, my, my daughters used to say to me, you know, daddy, you have so many friends. Um, and I, I, I look at them because, you know, I'm divorced and there were some different issues with their mom who, who would tend to drop friends all along the way. And I'd say, you know, girls, I'm not, I don't have so many friends because I'm such a nice guy. That's really not the reason. I have so many friends because I work at it. I work mm -hmm. hard. At it. And, and I worked at it before social media. I work at it now. We have this ability to touch people. And the other thing I want to leave you with, and this has to do with like Alan and what he's built here and what all of you guys can build, is that a network gives you reach. And I know you all try to build your networks and connect with people when you look at LinkedIn and who's connected to who. A network gives you reach, but more importantly, a community gives you power. Because mm. networks connect, but communities care. And when you build communities, you'll find that you get a huge amount of value out of them. And what I've learned is I always thought of myself as a networker because everywhere I went, I, I, I met people, every job I've ever had, every, every um, um, camp I've ever been to, every school I've ever gone to, I've, I found somebody new who I kind of added to my, to my network. But then I realized that they all knew each other. And I had different groups of people that did things in different places. And what I realized is that I build communities and that's where the real strength comes in. And when, when people, I, I know that if there's a conversation on Facebook and I posted something that might be controversial and some people are taking issue with it, I, I tend to sit back and I wait for someone who's a member of my community to step up and whether it's defending or explaining or just laying out what it's really about, I leave it to them because that's my community and they come yeah. in there and they add that value and, and they care. So build communities, um, reach out to people, build relationships. And um, once again, I want to thank Alan because he's always, I always know I can actually look at my camera and go, Oh my God, it's been a few weeks. I'll probably hear from Alan too. Yeah. I'm like that, I'm like that torn in your side. I just keep it. Even if it's just a retweet or a like of a post or a comment somewhere, that's connecting to it. Doesn't mean you have to pick up the phone or get in a Zoom or have a long conversation. Those little touch points are what build relationships. Yeah, and I think that's so important, you know, and it's what I preach. I preach because I just believe that it is, you know, it's like showing up every day. And people, I think, think that showing up is putting a post out there. It's not. It's just 
answering the comments. It's talking to people. It's in commenting. It's, you know, sharing. It's talking about the comment, even having that conversation. Some of the best conversations I've had have been where I've had disagreements with someone online and end up having a fabulous conversation. And that's about showing up online and showing up in life, I think, Ted. Well, I'm you glad know? that because what I take them every day serendipitously go to every every one of my of my social platforms LinkedIn Facebook Twitter Instagram and like or comment on somebody's post or I haven't done it in a while or mm. I've never done it for or you know or share their post or 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 I even have a newsletter uh, my, my, Sunday night my newsletter goes out with my content Wednesdays it's always someone else's content that I share serendipitously and that's my return on relationship newsletter as always, it's a pleasure. I could sit and talk for hours. Um, and I love the hats. Keep them going. Keep them going. And totally Biden, Biden all the way. The all the way. Make America healthy again. Yeah, literally. <laughs> literally. Have, a, have a great day, Ted. And thanks so much for coming on. And guys, if you do want to get in contact, do reach out to Ted because he will, and I am proof of it. He will answer. He always does. He is such a good guy, and uh, so um, delighted to have you on the show. It's an absolute pleasure, as always, talking to you. And uh, you stay safe, my friend. Thank you, Alan. You as well, and everybody else. Talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Guys, that's about our lot for today. Um, let me just switch this back over here to our background to, and we just take that off and there we go. So my thanks so much to Ted Rubin for jumping on with us today and uh, hopefully you learned loads and we shall see you all again next week. Yet again, next week we're going to be on the later time. I have the wonderful Jen, uh, Jennifer Watson uh, from Agora Pulse and also Such Social Pulse Weekly coming on to talk to us. So guys, have a great day, have a great week, and I shall see you all next week for another In Conversation with Alan. Until next week, talk to you soon. As I always say, be social. Bye.